forgot to load them. Smooth. <laughs> it's been broken for about two weeks. So grab your notes, take a couple notes. iPad slides are not posted, so sorry. Yeah, if you can hit the Front light, yep. Uh, right. Yeah, Can you make yourself a little louder on the YouTube video? It'd be really quiet. No, no, I'm just saying, like, I was one last night. I was here. Really? I'm sure. Yeah, I hardly I have my mom in Really? Yeah. How's the virtual speed stuff? All right, five point three. Five point three. We've looked at a few different rules with uh, square roots and with exponents so far. Now we're going to not, like, directly apply those rules, but we're going to work on graphing with square roots and with exponents. Our learning target. We will be able to graph radical functions, so something with a square root or a cube root. We will be able to write transformations of a radical function. So when we're writing transformation, does anybody, well, let's have a quick pop quiz. Does anyone remember what a transformation is from geometry? I think I saw face stand for first. It's like a shape or line. Yeah, exactly. We move it around the plane. We have a translation where we just move it from one spot to another. Remember rotations, all that good stuff. Reflection, those are our transformations. So we're just talking about how a radical function, something with a square root, moves in different spots. Students will be able to graph parabolas and circles. So we'll look at that a little bit at the end. We only have like one example on the slides of graphing a circle, and there might not even be one on the or there might only be one on the homework. So not a whole lot of time on that. Word of operation. We have another quote to start out today, straight from your textbook. A radical function contains a radical expression with the independent variable in the radicate. All that means is A radical function has an x value inside of our square root. When the radical is a square root, the function is called a square root function. So this would be called a square root function. When the radical is a cube root, when it's a cube root, the function is called a cube root function. So this one is a square root function. This one is a cube root function. Is that familiar? Perfect. Yeah. I thought you not. Now let's talk about parent functions for a second. Um, you guys have seen parent functions before, hopefully. We talked about the parent function of like a line. The parent function would just be y equals x, and that's just going a nice even line with uh, one, one slope. A parent function of like a parabola right at the axis and even one to one on the k value there. So we've seen parent functions before. Maybe you've seen the parent function of the square root before in algebra 2a. Maybe not. Um, but anyway, the parent function for a square, we call it, and if you have heard it with, with Mrs. Stone, then she would call it the squirrel tail. Right, the square root looks like a squirrel's tail. So our square root function, like in its most basic form, f of x equals the square root of x. The most basic form of this square root function starts at 0, 0, and its first point goes through 1, 1, and it continues, it continues from there. Looks like a squirrel's tail. Our parent function for the cube root of x is not like a squirrel's tail. So it's like two squirrel's tails on either side. Right? It kind of makes this weird S shape through here. Have we seen this before? No. No? Okay. So our parent 
parent function. We have squirrel's tail, and then we have kind of a weird S with a Q. So we're going to jump right in. Grab each function, identify the domain and the range of each. So, first one, will we grab? put negative 1 into this function, we would have one, uh, the square root of 1 fourth times negative 1. So in our square root, we would have a negative 1 fourth. Is that going to work? Does that come out clean or come out nice? No. So we, what you'd see in your calculator here is it would just say error. Okay? So we don't need to worry about those negative numbers when we're working. Zero in, what do we get? Zero. We plug one in. We have one fourth times one gives us one fourth. Square root of one fourth. Because of the rules we talked about yesterday. We just get one half. Now you could keep going. I mean if you wanted to plug two in, three in, four in, get a couple more points, you definitely could. But for the sake of, well, right now, with those two points, that's zero, zero, and that one half, we have enough to graph it. Okay? You can see that the squirrel's tail, um, but with the one fourth in front of the X, we will talk about our vertical string, horizontal string, trajectory, all that stuff. So that's all I'm looking for when we graph it. Now with letter B, we have the cube root, and we would do the same thing. We would just plug a couple values in, or we could even just look at our table, and then we would sketch a graph. Okay, your, your graph doesn't have to be exactly point to point perfect. I just really want to see a couple points on those graphs when we do this. Now, this is, if you want to write all this down, you can. I'll post the slides later. Um, hopefully this is something that we just start to kind of recognize and just become familiar with that we don't have to keep looking back at our notes for it. Um, some of this is, are also things that we have seen before. So I'm going to quick breeze through these and then I think the examples that we look at will be a little more helpful than me just talking about these things. So when we have a horizontal translation, that means that we have a graph We have a graph, say it's like this, and we're translating horizontally, we're moving horizontally. We might just move like that. So a horizontal translation. Shift the graph left to right, and we would know that it's a horizontal translation because we are adding or subtracting inside of that square root. Okay? One thing that we have to remember when we're going through these. Whatever is happening inside the square root or whatever is happening directly to our x is lying. Okay? X always lies. All the time. What I mean by that is we have, Amy's like, what? Why is x lying? Yep, x always lies. Um, what I mean by that, we have the square root of x minus 2. So we would think if we're going x minus 2, we're moving two units to the left, right? That's what you would think. You're minusing two, we're going two units left, but actually, you're moving two units to the right. So x is lying. x says minus two, but we're actually moving to, to the right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that kind of funny or not? Okay. Well, I guess you can put it like this. You, you have to get to the point where if you took that equation, it would go to zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. All right. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so x always lies. Uh, with a vertical translation, we're moving up or down, right? Uh, if we have a plus 7 on the end. Now, the plus 7 is not under our square root, so it's not attached to our x. So in this case, 
nobody's line. We actually would be moving up seven units. Um, same idea. The minus one is not attached to the square root or inside the square root. So we are actually moving down one unit. So what happens inside the square root moves us left and right. That would be horizontal and it's locked and it lies all the time. What happens outside of the square root, like our plus and minus, um, that's legit. That is a lie outside of the square root. That moves us up or down. Shifts our y value. Now we have a reflection. Again, I'll post these notes at some point, so if you can't really see as well as you'd like, or like to get me down and going too quick, then you'll be able to see that a little bit. We have a reflection, so we're either flipping our graph over the x axis or the y axis. Remember, x lies. So if we have like a negative sign attached to the x, you would think that means that we're flipping over the x, but nope, JK, we're flipping over the y. Just kidding. Yep, just kidding. X was lying. Now we have a negative sign outside of the square root, and it's legit. We actually do flip over the x axis. So x always lies. Now this is where I'm going to need your guys' help a little bit. Horizontal stretch or shrink in vertical stretches and shrinks. On a scale, well, I won't ask everybody. How comfortable are we with stretches and shrinks? Because I was going to do a little bit of review on this, take like five minutes to review it. Okay, I'm seeing enough knots. Can you hit the lights for a second then, Emma? So grab your calculator. What? Am I out? Yeah. Oh, I need to get another row. I have Jeez, this one. You let him down. Hey, this is what happens when you're the youngest of the math teachers. They just, you know, throw you whatever. Look at it. He's got to sew your down. Yeah. yeah, that's a super good idea. Yep. Um, let's start with a horizontal stretch or a shrink, okay? So I'm just using the examples they give us, all right? If we look at a horizontal, so up and down, shrink. Here's the example that they give us of one. So why don't you put in your y equals the square root of 3x, and then go to your table. Square root of 3x and go to your table. Lauren, did you get that? I And virtual students that might be watching or listening, I'm drawing on the board now, and I will post a picture of what we do. So you can fast forward like five minutes and then pick up this. Wait, they can hear you? We'll see. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have Lauren, because I know her name now, so I can you know, ask her stuff. So you can check with Aaron real quick to make sure. Do you not know my name? Uh, well, I do. You good, Lauren? Good? Maybe? We'll find out. If you go to your table, what does it tell you the value is zero, as zero is, the y value? Yeah, good start. What about one? We'll go to the hundreds. What about at two? Awesome. Is that what everyone got as well? Yeah. Good? Okay. So if we were to graph this. So if we were to throw this on a graph, right? Same thing here. The x is lying, right? We see, see times 3. We would think that that is stretching out by 3 or something like that. But nope, times 3 means we are shrinking by 1 third. The reason that we would call this a shrink in the red would be just our parent function, our squirrel's tail, OK? In the blue would be our f of x equals square root of 3x. So instead of 
going out like this and gradually growing, we shrink together our X's and that moves up the Y's and makes it grow a little bit faster and goes a little bit higher, okay? When we have a stretch, go to your Y equals, put the square root of 0.5X. And then Ryan, you can give me the zero, one, and two once you get those. 0.5? That zero? Well, I was, I was asking about uh, Yep, square root of 0.5X. Uh, zero is zero, one is Okay. Uh, one is 0 0.71. Okay. And two is one. So zero, zero. Does anyone disagree? No. What's the beta? So look, when we have, notice, with when we're moving horizontally up and down, that means that our number is inside of our square root, okay? The shrink, x is lying. When we're multiplying by 3, we think we would be stretching, but we're shrinking by one-third. When we are stretching now, we would think that we'd be stretching by one-half, but x is lying. We're stretching by 2, okay? Like we can see, sorry this is so small for the people in the back. The blue, or our square root of one half, is underneath the red. So the blue will grow slower than the red will. Okay, that's why it's stretched. Because if we took the red, our parent function, and we stretched it out, then it would flatten down just a little bit. Okay, so Scott would always say undo the x and do the y. I would always get like super confused. Undo the x and do the y. Yeah, it's the same idea. It's the same idea. Undo the x, so like... I mean, do the opposite of what X says. Yeah, but like, she taught us that when we were online, and so like, I had I was, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. Every it's time same, she said it, I was It's the same crazy. idea. I just say that X is lying, because I haven't figured out a better thing than that. X is lying, Y is legit. Uh, whatever works. Do we, I mean, my point in going through this, can we see how this would be, even though we're multiplying by 3 inside the square root, can we see how... This is called a shrink because the x's are shrinking and our y value is growing faster. Maybe seeing yeah, side by side that. helps a little bit. When we go ahead, yeah. Like I always thought it was the other way around, but yeah, now I understand. Helps a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So that's all horizontal, right? Inside of the square root. Remember, inside the square root attached to the x, we would think vertical, right? But x is still lying. So that changes things horizontally. Now, if we look vertical, okay? If we have a vertical shrink, so if we're keeping with our chart here, I mean, we'd be looking at this one first, a vertical shrink. Go ahead and put 1 fifth or 0.2 times the square root of x into your y equals, and then. Uh, well, Trey kind of picks on himself, so so we're all good. Oh, Emma, did you get it? Yeah. Sweet. What'd you get for zero? Zero. Okay. One. And two. Do we agree? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, Levi's my cookie cookie. Levi, I bet your cola is too. Mine's not up. Your cola's not even up. I don't know how long. Oh! <laughs> At least try not to get cookies. Yeah. <laughs> so it's zero, zero. One point two and one point two eight. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, you're done. 
I could call mom right now. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> no, 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 no
So technically, X cubed looks like this. Exactly. Snakey mix snake snake. <coughs> All right. And our cube root is a sideways snakey mix snake snake. Mm -hmm. Do we see any connection there, or some yeah. type of similarity, or are we just so? Just three. Okay. Moving on to these examples. Why? Well, yes, there are Y's and X's in the book. Describe the transformation represented by G of X. Then graph each function. We're going to stay away from the graphing for now so that we can um, save that for your homework on your own. You could. All right, look. We've got two numbers we need to deal with. This X minus 3 inside the square root. What does that do? That moves that to the right. Right, so we're saying...
broke it up and we we engaged with each other for like 10 minutes so that doesn't count 